Parents, as you know, the Kerman Unified School District has been working diligently this summer to put together a return to school plan for the 2021 school year. This draft plan was developed from the guidelines from the CDC and from the state of California and the Fresno County Public Health Department. We are currently at what's called a more risk, which is small in-person classes, activities, and events. Groups of students have to stay together within the same teacher throughout the school day and not mix with other students. Students must remain at least six feet apart and not share any objects or staggered road age schedules to accommodate smaller class sizes. The reopening of schools is guided by the following principles. Number one, parents and students, is to protect the health and safety of students and staff. And obviously, again, following the guidelines from CDC, Fresno County Department of Health, and the California Department of Education. Arrival and dismissal expectations. Expectations for students around within the building is to happen within expected six-foot distancing. Children and staff are not to be in school if they show symptoms of illness and must be symptom-free for 72 hours before returning. Students are on campus only for the duration of the school day, and students may not enter the campus before the arrival times. We have developed a blending learning plan where sizes of classrooms are limited, thus we have to split classes in half. For example, we're going to have two groups, a group A and group B. Half of the students would be coming on Wednesdays and Fridays. Half of the students in the class would be coming on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and alternating on Mondays. Mondays would also be considered minimum days. You can see the times on there. We had to shift the times because of transportation issues. We can only transport so many students on each bus. Thus, we had to stagger the start times. Elementary schedule would be 8 to 2.40. Alternate Mondays, 8 to 1.30. Kerman Middle School would be 8.40 to 3.50. Alternate Mondays, 8.40 to 2.30. Kerman High School schedule will be 8.40 to 4 o'clock. Alternate Mondays, 8.40 to 2.40. The two-day rotation blended learning model. Students report to school on two designated days, Group A or Group B. On the non-report day, students will be engaged in assignments, performance tasks, and projects. On Mondays, Group A and Group B students will either be engaged in distance learning opportunities or at-school instruction. Instructional scheduling model options. Students not on campus will engage in home learning instruction. Students who remain home due to a significant health risk or those who choose not to send their child to campus will be able to log in and access their instruction and lessons remotely. Students at home will receive daily lessons and have access to the same curriculum content just as the students on campus are receiving. Home learning model. Who is organizing home learning? We have a caring team of home education learning program coordinators, the HELP team. They will send parents a welcome letter introducing themselves if parents choose to have their students remain at home. Parents should contact their site assistant principal if they have any questions about the HELP model. Feel free to contact the site administrator if you have any questions. Expectations for children. Students will be allowed on the campus at the assigned start time. Students enter the campus without parents at their assigned entrance when they go through a thermal screening process checking for temperatures. Students must adhere to the six-foot rule when entering and exiting. Students who arrive late must enter using the designated entrance and sign in at the office. Students will be taken to the dismissal points, different gates depending on the school site, by the teachers. When parents are there to be picked up their child, the students will be released by the teachers. Expectations for parents. Parents will arrive at their assigned start and dismissal time. Parents drop off their children outside the campus. Parents are encouraged to allow their child to make the last part of the journey into the campus independently. Parents are encouraged to deliver older students at the car drop-off. Staff may enter through assigned entrances and thermal screenings. Staff must wear appropriate PPE and sanitize hands when entering the campus. District will adhere to county and staff mandates and state mandates. Staff needs to use six-foot distancing when entering and leaving campuses, and staff will take their classes to dismissal areas. Class group guidelines. School teams will create groups of students that will become a class for the duration of the blended learning model. 
The goal in creating groups of students is to develop well-functioning classes. When creating class groups, please adhere to the following guidelines as much as possible. Classes will be split in half in group A and B. Priorities will be given to all children from a household in the same schedule. In other words, families will be kept in the same days at school. So for example, the same family group, uh, if you have elementary, middle school, or high school students, will either go Tuesday, Thursdays, or Wednesday, Fridays. But again, the plan is to keep all students in the household on the same instructional days. Expectations around use of materials. Classrooms and use of materials. The teachers will maintain the sanitizing of the classroom and materials. Toys must be sanitized daily. We're looking at preschool and TK. If they cannot be sanitized, they must be packed away. All school materials stay at school. No home materials are brought to school, with the exception of a pencil case, which then stays at school. Students cannot bring personal toys to school. Recommendation from CDC is that libraries remain close to students. Health and safety guidelines. Six students. Students who show any signs of illness may not attend school. Please do not send your child to school if he or she is showing any symptoms of illness, which could be passed on to another child or adult. If any member of the household has symptoms of COVID-19, do not send your child to school for the California legislation and Fresno County Health Department. Students who show signs of illness or have a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or higher will be sent home from school. A member of administration, the nurse or teacher will phone a parent to arrange immediate pickup of a sick child. Health and safety guidelines. School health nurse office. School health offices will only be available for students who need to be sent home due to illness and injuries. Students who need medication or have other serious health concerns as well. Referral to health office or consider classroom playground based services. So this is a shift. Typically, we, uh, all these reasons on this slide, on slide 16, refer to reasons to send kids to the office. Obviously, the LV, our licensed vocational nurse, will be very busy dealing with COVID-19 issues. So really, what we're asking is minor injuries or illnesses uh, be taken care of by the school teacher. COVID-related symptoms. Slide 17 basically covers um, symptoms related to COVID-19. Um, uh, obviously, we want families to be aware of those symptoms, and obviously that if uh, a child has those symptoms, to not send kids to school. Movement of people in and throughout the building. All movement of students around and within the building is to be supervised by an adult and adhere to the expected six-foot distancing. When students are moving around the building, they need to be taught the following expectations. These expectations must be reinforced consistently by all teachers, they include everyone washing hands before moving to another section of the school, keeping hands and bodies to him or herself, using the assigned restrooms and sink, one child at a time using their assigned restroom, and children must wash hands after using the restroom. Outdoor play. Recess will be staggered to ensure social distancing guidelines and reduce the number of students on the playground. Students are expected to follow the school rules and cooperate when directed by school staff. Students are expected to adhere to all the new procedures so the school can follow the guidelines for health and safety. As per the health and safety guidelines, students must play only with their designated group with social distancing guidelines. Students who struggle to meet the new expectations will be not be permitted on the playground. No sharing of equipment, frisbees, playground balls, toys, bikes, etc. is permitted during this time. Students will be able to play on the playground equipment. Arranging instructional spaces. This is an example of what the picture on the right showing six foot distancing in a classroom, which is basically every other seat. So obviously if we're, we have a group A and a group B, group A would be in every other seat. The next day, obviously group B would come and adhere to the six foot distancing. Building layouts. Obviously the goal is to minimize congestion. It's recommended by CDC that students and staff designate one-way directions for hallways and exterior passes, and also assign entry and exit doors and stagger students' arrival and departure times. Kerman Unified School District Maintenance Operations COVID-19 Response. Our cleaning and disinfecting routines have undergone an overhaul. Uh, frequently touched surfaces will be our focus during school hours. Fogging machines will be used in every school building on a nightly basis. 
During the COVID-19 school closures, we have made various improvements to help our staff achieve a higher level of sanitation. These have included HVAC filter upgrade, new disinfecting equipment, hand washing stations, hand sanitizing stations, and training our staff on utilizing cleaning and disinfecting and new equipment. Kerman Unified School District Maintenance Operations COVID-19 Response. Kerman Unified has recently purchased fogging machines for every site in the district. Custodians are now equipped with the foggers that will allow them to disinfect every room on a nightly basis. This way, every surface your child touches will be disinfected before the start of the new school day. HVAC filter upgrades. We have upgraded our filters and all our air conditioning units have been equipped with this MERV 13 filter to provide the cleanest possible air for our staff and students. Touchless free hand sanitizers. We have placed hand sanitizing stations throughout the district school sites. Hand sanitizing stations will provide easy access to 60% concentrate or higher ethyl alcohol for staff and students. Staff training. Kerman Unified will provide ongoing training and education for all custodial and maintenance staff on proper cleaning and disinfecting procedures. School District Transportation Disinfecting the buses. Before and after each run, the driver shall clean and wipe down high-touch areas and disinfect with the new Gen Eon foggers. At the bus stop, we will require six feet social distancing at the school bus stops. Drivers and pupils shall wear personal protective equipment, which would be masks. On the bus, hand sanitizer dispensers in place at entry. Pupils and siblings living under the same roof will be seated together. Pupils that are picked up first will load from the back to the front. Pupils unloading at the school site will unload from the back to back, stagger unloaded at school sites, one bus at a time. At school, pupils will load to front based on stop order, first off, last on open windows and use of fans to circulate fresh air, mark seats to show students where to sit, and all riders will be required to wear a mask during transportation. Uh, this just gives an example of what we're looking at in regards to um, transportation. We're looking at the bottom picture, which allows a bus that carries 56 students uh, to now carry the capacity with 28, uh, obviously wearing a mask. Um, you can see it does limit uh, the number of students that can ride a bus at the same time by half. Meals and snack procedures. All children will eat meals in our designated indoor or outdoor spaces, weather permitting, maintaining social distancing. All students and staff wash their hands before and after eating meals. Meals will be supervised by school staff. Our Kerman Unified School District food service staff, social distancing with staff during meal preparation and delivery, Staff shall wear face protections and approve glove use in the operation of meal services and preparation. Enhance cleaning and sanitation procedures of equipment, dining areas, and tools. At the school sites, staggered meal service times, alternate dining locations to ensure social distancing, new methods for students to receive meals in a safe and healthy manner, one-way entrances and exits with six-foot markers on the floor, Students will have the opportunity to wash hands prior to receiving and consuming meals, modifying existing equipment with new safety features to ensure students' health, utilizing bus routes for meal delivery for students who are distance learning. In other words, students are, that are home will receive meals at bus stops or also can receive meals at Kerman Floyd or Kerman High School. Individually sealed wrapped foods to prevent cross-contamination. Parents, that uh, concludes uh, the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, kind of the next steps, what we're looking at, parents, is that we will be having a town hall uh, meeting, which will be, be done virtually where you can call in or, get, or log in online for each of the school sites. So each school site will be uh, contacting uh, you as a parent so that uh, either the, the principal and myself, the school superintendent, can answer any questions that you feel that this PowerPoint presentation did not answer. Um, again, thank you for your cooperation and we look forward to having you come back to school in August. Thank you.